Have you often asked yourself the question, do I need to spend a crap ton of money on a really expensive mic preamp to get truly great results? Buckle your seatbelts, it's about to get nerdy in here. Hey everybody, how's it going now? I've got this on the show today. This is the Focusrite ISO One mic preamp. Been wanting to check one of these things out forever. I remember reading about these things in like recording and mix magazines like back in the early 2000s and whatnot. I think, oh wow, those would be kind of fucking cool to check out. Well, lo and behold, Focusrite hit me up. They're like, Glad we need a fucking video. Can you help us out, please? And I'm like, yes, of course. As you know, I've been using the red 16 line way in the back there. Uh, for just a bunch of stuff for a good part of this year and it's been nothing short of absolutely spectacular and they asked me to check out their ISA one mic preamp and I'm like hell yes I'd be thrilled to do it I've always wanted to take a look at one of these things uh, first of all I gotta say this is freaking heavy this thing weighs a you know just shy of a metric ton and it's got this nice handy dandy grip on it uh, so you can use it as a blunt force trauma weapon to club the bass player to death when he's wasting your studio time i think that's a nice touch way to go focus right good job guys uh, but why 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 should we get a great mic preamp? I, like you guys have heard me say nine times out of ten you don't need to spend money on a massively expensive mic preamp when you're doing metal because we're not doing Celine Dion. Especially if you're recording metal guitars, that kind of thing, you don't need the most esoteric, high detailed mic preamp in existence. This guy here, this is for recording Celine Dion. This is, if you if you happen to have Celine drop by and you want to put her on a great microphone and a great preamp to capture every last nuance of her performance, yeah, this would be a good place to start. You can get this bad boy for $6.99 US over at Sweetwater. Now, my version's kind of been bumped up a little bit. I've got the digital IO card on the back uh, that has Dante on it, and I'm gonna get into that in a couple minutes and kind of explain what that's all about. But for the most part, you can get yourself a really badass mic preamp. What you're getting here is basically the preamp section of a channel strip of a console that was designed by Mr. Rupert Neve. They figured out, hey, this thing sounds pretty freaking cool. Why don't we make a single channel version of it for the home user and this is what you get. Now I had to pull the top off this thing to install the digital card and I got to look at the, the build and it looks to be, you know, an actual solid piece of gear. There's a real Lundhall transformer in there. There's all kinds of actual freaking hardware that you'd want to see in a mic preamp as opposed to, you know, some of the cheaper knockoff brands that I might have taken a look at over the years and maybe taken a sledgehammer to. So taking a look at the front panel, we've got our gain control. It's stepped in 10 degree increments, so you can crank this up. And you've got a trim knob as well for some fine tuning. You've also got this 30 to 60 knob right here, button, excuse me. And what that's gonna do is let you get from 10 to 30 to begin with. Click on that switch. It's gonna take you from 30 to 60, and then you can add an additional 20 dBs with this right here. Now. This does not function like a 1073 style mic preamp where you kind of set the gain with the switch and then the secondary fader is kind of set at unity when it's cranked up all the way and then you can dial it back to load up the transformers and get those a little bit more saturated. This is just an extra 20 dBs of gain for fine tuning. So my suggestion would be kind of maybe leave it at about Eh, say about maybe the nine o'clock position and find whatever gain you need right there with the with the main gain switch and, and get that sort of and then if you, if you need to do fine tuning adjustments use the secondary fader like that you can't really load up the transformer like you would on a 1073 it's not that kind of preamp but it does have different flavors though because it's got switchable impedance over here you can go medium high low which would be great for working with, say, large diaphragm dynamic mics like an SM7 or even a ribbon mic. And then you've got the ISO 110 mode, which emulates the impedance for the original console channel strip. That's pretty cool. Now, I got to say what really impressed me is it's got a DI on it with a switchable impedance, no less, high and low. Usually you want to go high, but I mean, like you might want to color your sound a little bit differently. It's got, where the hell is it here? Loads of gain. Now you guys have heard me rant and rave about this this for ages. That's the Countryman DI. I'm always saying get one, get one, get one. If you get one of these, you're not going to need one of these because this has the rarest of all things, an amp pass-through, so you can send your signal out to your guitar amp. You'll get your DI signal here on the front, 
And with the second one, you hook that up to the front of your amp. So, and then you can record that however you will. That's actually a pretty rare feature for a mic preamp. I've got a lot of DIs on my different mic preamps in the board over here, over here and whatnot. This is the first time I've actually seen one include an amp out. So big thumbs up there to Focusrite for actually including that feature. I think that's sorely missed on a lot of other mic preamps. Very cool. Never seen that anywhere actually, besides an actual fucking dedicated direct box. So great job there. Uh, what else here? We've got our clocks, clock source over here. As you can see, we're on the Dante clock and that's locked there at 48 hertz because I do this show in 48 hertz, but it'll go all the way up to 192 in case you need to record some dog whistles or something like that. And you've got a headphone output with a Q-Mix input as well. That switchable, where the hell are we? Yep, just click that on right there. So if you want to hear your playback from your DAW, click that on, away you go. And then you've got your dedicated headphone as well. So that's pretty freaking cool if you want to hear just what's coming off the preamp. So on the back panel here, we've got our Q-Mix input. We've got our DI output, main output. Uh, line input, so you can hook up line level stuff like a keyboard or something like that. Of course, our mic input, and we've got a channel insert as well in case you want to hook up, say, an outboard compressor to this. Now, that's another thing a lot of you guys have asked me about over the years is, you know, I record from a mic preamp. If I can get this in the shot back here, I've got my distressor way in the back, and I've been using that for ages. I've got my mic preamp, and I've got my distressor. Then it goes into the DAW. This will allow you to do that. It's got a channel insert right here so you can actually put that in your signal chain before it ever hits your outputs or your converters or what have you. All right, enough yakking. Let's run a clip of this thing. We got Christian Vey who came into the studio to play a little acoustic guitar for us. We mic'd him up with this Lawton LA120 and let me show you guys what that's all about. Now, once again, I said this thing has a direct input and that's the thing. If you're running a live mic, you can use your DI as well on a separate output channel. So this is actually two channels. It's not two mic preamps, but you do get two channels. One of my favorite tricks for recording acoustic guitar is to use a microphone, but, it's to, but if the guitar has a piezo on it or how the hell you pronounce that, I've been recording for 25 years. I've still never been able to figure out how to pronounce that right. Anyway, point being is if you've got a some kind of a direct system on the acoustic, what I like to do is pan the microphone over to one side and the direct on the other side, and you get this. Now I gotta tell you guys, Christian's doing some very delicate picking there, and I was pretty impressed by how well this mic preamp could keep up with it. There's just the tiniest bit of hiss because he's playing very, very softly, but this thing's got heaps of gain before it's ever going to be any kind of serious trouble. Obviously, I could easily take that out with say RX-8 or something like that, but I wanted to show you guys just what kind of levels we're working with when we're throwing on 40 and 50 dBs of gain, just how much hiss you're actually adding into the single. So this thing can definitely deliver the goods. All right, so I switched over to the ISO-1 mic preamp and I'm using this Lawton LS-208 end address condenser. It's absolutely great. You're gonna see that on some upcoming shows. But I just kind of wanted to show off what's going on here. As you can see, we've got a view meter and then we've got an LED wave, uh, LED color display as well, showing us the kind of levels we're getting. Not anything too insane, but this is really cool. As you see, I've got the FMR really nice compressor hooked up here. And this is actually switchable. I didn't know this. You can leave everything hooked up. And if you don't want to unplug it at the end of the day, you got the insert right there. So you can just punch it in and out of your signal. 
Now, I compress on the way in all the time, pretty much on every single video I've ever done. And I've got this set up for some, you know, nice, gentle compression in uh, super nice mode. And uh, I thought I'd read a little bit for you guys for that wonderful, you know, late night FM talk show voiceover kind of thing. So here we go from one of my favorite authors. For instance, on the planet Earth, man had always assumed that he was more intelligent than dolphins because he had achieved so much. The wheel, New York, wars, and so on. Whilst all the dolphins had ever done was muck about in the water having a good time. But conversely, the dolphins had always believed that they were far more intelligent from man for precisely the same reasons. Now, one thing I absolutely love about this is I'm not hooked up in any kind of traditional sense. I'm not using analog outputs. I'm not using ADAT. I'm not using AES. None of that. I'm hooked up to the computer via network cable because I'm on the Dante system and this absolutely freaking rules. All I've got is a single Cat 5E cable going from here into my network switch and that's it. Now, word of the wise, if you're new at Dante, don't start out with a great big 32 by 32 or 64 by 64 system to start because I, I've had a little bit of trouble with some dropouts and whatnot. I've got it down to 16 by 16 because frankly, that's all I need in my network right now because I've got this and I've got a Neve 8 channel and that's pretty much all I'm going to need. And so far, it seems to be much more stable than setting up for 32 by 32. So there is that. I'm going to try recording the drums via Dante in a few weeks and see how that works going into the Red 16 line. And this mic preamp is probably going to be going out in the main performance room and stay out there. And it's just going to be hooked up strictly via Dante. And I think that's going to be absolutely tremendous. It's a really cool system. I'm just starting to get my feet wet with it. I mean, like the big advantage here is you don't have to worry about signal degradation because your converters are right on your mic preamp. You hook up a network cable and you run it for thousands of feet and not have to worry about it. And the great thing about Dante is you can send any input to any output and it's going to work. I need to learn a little bit more about networking because I'm just basically working it off my router right now. I think I need to get a dedicated switch if I was going to do a bigger system. But uh, so far, it seems to be running absolutely rock solid right now. And clocking is not an issue either. That's a big thing uh, when you're working with multiple digital systems. You have to have one master, one slave. Dante makes it real easy to set that up. This is slaved to the Red 16 line. Not an issue at all. Sounds great. And there's almost no latency. I was playing with this a little bit earlier today. Uh, via a guitar DI, and yeah, it's just completely unnoticeable. So you can run an amp sim through this with no issues whatsoever. Speaking of amp sims, let's check out what kind of levels we're going to get with the DI because that was a big problem with some of the early Focusrite um, Scarlet series. The DIs were a little too hot, so when you get hot pickups, you wind up clipping the signal and whatnot. Let's see what kind of headroom we can get with a couple different guitars. <laughs> So I've hooked up the Solar T. I just want to give the DI a headroom test. This was a big problem with the original Scarlet series. Obviously, this is a different series of equipment completely, but I just want to check, make sure we've got enough space. Uh, as you can see, there's only 10 dBs of gain on the DI right here. And interestingly enough, we've got a high and low impedance setting. I'm just messing around with the low impedance. Maybe it gives you a little bit more headroom. I mean, your mileage may vary, but I just wanted to check, make sure we can chug on this thing and we're not going to go into the reds in Reaper. <laughs> Now, just checking the screen in the back, looks like we've got lots of headroom, no issues whatsoever. Uh, this is running a couple of Solar Duncan pickups. Definitely cool guitar. Can't wait to show you guys the full mix demo on this thing because, uh, yeah, this, this one's pretty freaking badass. 
Now, I also wanted to check out something a little bit more high output, so I pulled out my Legator that's loaded up with a couple of Fishman Fluents. This is seven string, and again, there's just loads of signal coming out of this thing. Let's see what we get. <laughs> Looks like to be tons of headroom. Maybe those last couple chugs. Uh, no, you know what? That's about the same level. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> All right, so I just did a quick follow-up. I ran this guitar into the DEIs on the 1073 OPX, and they're giving me the same kind of squared off look. So that lets me know that it's actually the Fishman pickups. Uh, they're definitely kind of squared off in the output as opposed to what you'll get with a traditional passive pickup like which were on the solar. There's nothing wrong with either pickup. I just want to make sure there's enough headroom for the job. And yes, the DI on the ISO one definitely fits the bill. Feel free to chug away with one of those. Not gonna be a problem. And of course, let's check out a full mix. Let's mic up a cabinet with this thing with just a single SM57 and see what kind of guitar tones we can get. Check this out. Okay, so bottom line, if you want to step your game up and get away from your standard onboard mic preamps and maybe get something with a little bit more flavor, the Eyes of One's probably going to be a great contender. The fact it's only $7.99 is absolutely fantastic. I love the fact it's got a channel insert as well. I think that's super cool. So adding a compressor in is no big deal. Now, just to make things interesting, my friends at Sweetwater asked if they could get in on this video and I'm like, hell yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to give away an ISO one to one lucky SOB somewhere out there in the world. We will ship it anywhere in the world to whoever wins this raffle. All you got to do is sign up below, jump on the raffle copter, sign up for a few things like subscribing to my channel, subscribing to Sweetwater, mailing list, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. It's real easy to do and you might just win one of these mic preamps. I don't think it comes with the DA card. It's just an analog hookup, but hey, that's not too bad. And yes, we will ship it anywhere in the world. Links for that are in the description below. If you want to get your hands on a badass mic preamp, uh, sign up or go check it out over at Sweetwater. Thanks so much to my friends at Focusrite for setting me up with this thing. I'm definitely going to be using this on a couple of vocal tracks in the very near future. I think it's pretty damn sweet, and I absolutely love the Dante connectivity. I think that's absolutely amazing. So hit the link in the description below. Sign up on the Raffle Copy. You might just win one of the things. And until next time, let's make some great music together.